What's up guys, Justin here with BCG Essentials, back with another Blender cloth tutorial for you. This is actually the first in a series on creating different kinds of cloth and the ways that you can use that inside of Blender. But in this video, I wanted to talk specifically about some of the basics of creating cloth inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to do this, um, we're gonna use what's known as a cloth modifier and this is actually the first video where I've used my default model of Bonnie so this is Bonnie my border collie and she's gonna be my default model moving forward inside of blender but what we want to do is we want to start off and we need a couple different planes in here so we're gonna drape a piece of fabric across and over Bonnie so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by doing a shift a we're gonna add a plane at the base and I'm gonna do a shift right click and place this underneath Bonnie first. So there we go. So I'm going to do a shift A. And we're just going to add a plane underneath Bonnie. We're going to scale that up a bit. So just right here, that's just to have something for this to be on. I'm also going to move it up until it's kind of aligned with Bonnie's feet. And so now what we need to do is we need to add a second plane. So I'm just gonna do a shift right click again to place this uh, 3D cursor on top of this plane. I'm gonna do a shift A in order to insert a new plane. And then we'll just tap the G key and the Z key and move it up above Bonnie. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this second object and we're gonna make it into a piece of cloth. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the cloth modifier, which is a modifier you can find in the modifier section um, on the right hand side over here. Note that I'm currently in Blender 2.82. If you're in a different version, this might look a little bit different. And so what we need to do is we need to take this plane and make it into a piece of cloth. And so the way that you can do that is you can add a modifier. And so there's some other steps in here as well, but I'm just gonna show you what this is gonna do if we don't take those steps. So right now, if we were to add this modifier, and we're gonna click on this button right here, and we're gonna click on the button for cloth. And so when I click on the button for cloth, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this object and it's gonna simulate it as a piece of cloth. And so right now, if I go down to the bottom of the page and I click the play button, this is gonna play an animation where this simulates what a piece of cloth would do with the physics inside of Blender. Notice that over here, this says settings are inside the physics tab. So right now, if we were to hit play, this will just fall through everything um, way down here. We don't want that, so we're gonna drag this back to our first frame, and we're gonna add a couple things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a collision modifier to these two objects, because what we want is we want this to collide with the objects beneath it. So we want this to hit these and collide with them rather than just falling through them. So in order to do that, you are just going to click on one of these and we're actually gonna go into the physics properties. So if you click on physics properties, you can see how you can enable different kinds of physics. Well, in this situation, the physics that we want to enable is collision. So since I have my Bonnie model selected right now, I'm just gonna click on collision and we're gonna go ahead and leave this as is for right now. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the play button. Notice. Now what happens is this actually falls down and it kind of like crashes into Bonnie. You get some really weird results that are kind of fun, but it's still not doing what we want it to do. But we also want to add collision to the ground. So we're gonna click on this, click on collision. So now if this falls down, it'll bounce off of Bonnie, kind of bounce off the ground. It'll get stuck in there because there's something wrong with our object. And the thing that's wrong with our object right now is this doesn't have enough vertices in it in order for this to calculate this as cloth. So if I was to hit the tab button right now, you can see how what this, is, what this has in it is it just has these four corner vertices. There's no edges across the middle or anything like that. Well, the problem with that is because we don't have any extra geometry in here, there's nothing for this to bend along, right? So when this hits this, it's almost like you dropped a piece of cardboard and it bounces off of something down below. So it's not really quite doing what we wanted to do yet. So what we want to do is we want to subdivide this. So inside of edit mode, so you would just click on this, hit the tab key to go into edit mode, and then we're just going to do a control R. If you remember, control R is going to let us add a loop cut. And so we want to add a number of loop cuts running this way. 
So notice that this is following my mouse with the direction that it's going. I just wanna scroll up until I get a number of different loop cuts in here. So we're gonna go ahead and click right here. That should be plenty. It looks like I set this to about 23. If you wanna do something uniform, you can type in a value like 25. But then we also need to add loop cuts running the other direction because we're basically splitting this up into a bunch of different faces so we can calculate what the cloth would do. So we're just gonna do a control R again We'll just scroll up and click, and then right click, and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in 25 loop cuts in that direction as well. You wanna be a little bit careful with the number of loop cuts you put in here. If you put in like 150, it's gonna take a long time for it to calculate the physics of this. But um, I like to leave it like this, and then what we'll do later is we'll subdivide it to make it look smoother. But now, if I hit the tab key, what this is gonna do is this is gonna fall down and it's going to collide with my Bonnie model. Notice things get a little bit weird here. We're gonna work on that in a second, but you can see how now you're getting a significantly different result than you were before. So let's go ahead and drag this frame back to zero. And now let's just go in and adjust the cloth settings for this piece of cloth. So there's a number of different things that you can adjust in here. I'm gonna kinda of leave these alone for right now, and I'm just gonna use one of these material presets. So these material presets make this act like a different material would act. So in this situation, you can select something like cotton or silk or rubber, and they're all gonna act a little bit different. So for example, if I was to click on this and then click on cotton and click play, it's gonna act like cotton would act. And so we still have a pretty big problem with this piece of cloth though, in that when it hits the Bonnie model and flips around, all of the vertices are kind of like intersecting with each other, which we don't necessarily want because that's not very realistic. It doesn't give us a very good result. And so within our settings, there's a box we need to check to make this calculate a little bit better. So if we scroll down under collisions, you can see how right now this is set to object collisions. However, what we want is we also want this to have the box for self collisions checked because a self collision is going to mean that this piece of cloth not only will collide with anything that it falls on, it'll also collide with itself. If I click the play button, you can see how this is actually going to collide with itself in addition to the object that it's colliding on top of. So now this object kind of falls along the body model. All right, so I have a bit of a problem because I picked such a narrow model that doesn't have really too much of an up. So we're just gonna take this cloth and we're gonna scale it again. It's not gonna do the best thing for the topology in here, but that's really okay. We could also just remove this material, but I'm just gonna scale it on the uh, X axis a little bit more. We're gonna make this almost like a ribbon. Then we're just gonna move it forward so that it'll kind of sit on Bonnie's back here. But what we've done, and one other thing you can do is you can also up the quality of this simulation as well. So you'll get a higher quality cloth simulation, but you do get a uh, slower frames. But what we wanna do down here is we just wanna turn our quality of our collisions up a little bit as well. So now we have self collisions on, we have quality up and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and click the play button. Notice that this is a little bit slow when it does this the first time. That's because it's coming in here and doing all of these different calculations. And so if you want to speed this up, one thing you can do is you can come in here and you can actually pre-cache the frames. So if you scroll down to the cache option, you're going to notice that this has the option to cache a certain number of frames. So basically what that means is that'll calculate all of the frames in here ahead of time so that you don't have to rerun this simulation every time. Um, so it's not recalculating this every time. You can see how you can let this run. Well, you can tell it to go ahead and bake when you bake this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go in, it's gonna pre-calculate all of these different frames in here. You can see how that takes a little while, but once those are pre-calculated, you'll be able to move along with the simulation really quickly. So instead of having to stop and wait, like we have been before, it's gonna come in here and cache all of this out. So I'm gonna let this work, and then we'll come back in and take a look at it, talk a little bit about, um, talk a little bit about smoothing this result out. And so now that this is done, when you run this, it's gonna run really quickly, as opposed to you having to sit here and wait for this to uh, calculate all of those frames. So once you kind of get this set the way you want it to be set, 
then you can kind of move around and kind of pick the shot that you want. So in this case, I kind of like the one with Bonnie right here with this cloth sitting kind of curled around her like she's using it as a as a scarf or something like that. So what we're going to do now is you'll notice that the result that we got on our cloth is kind of bunched up, but it doesn't really look very realistic. Well, that's because this is basically just calculating this based on the subdivisions that we had in here. Well, what we can do is we can add a modifier to this to smooth it out and make it look a lot better. So if I was to add a modifier right here, you would just click on the add modifier button we're going to go down and we're going to activate the subdivision surface modifier. You can see how what that does is that really smooths this out. And you can set the number of subdivisions that show up in here by clicking and dragging on this face. So you can see how, for example, I can turn this way up in order to get a really good preview of what this is going to look like. So in the in the viewport I can drag that up. Just remember that the more times that you drag this up, the slower your scene is going to be. And then you can also turn this up for your rendering as well. So what you have now is you have this nice cloth in here and the only problem with this piece of cloth is it doesn't have any thickness associated with it. And so we're going to change that by adding a solidify modifier. We'll talk more about the solidify modifier in the future but basically what that does is that's going to give this thickness. So now if you look at this, this has a thickness of 0 0.01 meters. So you can set the thickness of this object. So if I was to write, or if I was to drag this to the right, for example, this gets really thick. It's obviously not what we want. So what I'm going to do is type in a value of 0 0.005 and hit the enter key. That'll make this thinner. But now this cloth has a thickness associated with it. And notice that you can, and I would recommend disabling these views before you do this, but you could click between different frames in here because it's baked to get different views of your cloth. So depending on what you want, you could basically set this to different timestamps or time areas depending on what you're looking for. So in the next video, we can talk a little bit about applying a material to something like this. So that's from in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? What have you been creating with cloth inside a blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.